So OpenAI has just released the updated GPT-4 engine that powers the popular chatbot ChatGPT. Now the coolest thing about the new GPT-4 is that it can actually generate conversation from images. Honestly, it's kind of hard for me to believe that this day is here. It's not just a chatbot, it's interacting now with photographs. And it can, for the most part, understand the real world objects and the context that they're in from the image. Which brings a whole new layer to what's so impressive about this large language model. The OpenAI team says that the new model is performing at a human level intelligence on some academic performance tests. And they also stated that it's throwing in 40% less fake news. I'd say that's good. 40% less fake news is better than the same amount of fake news. So yeah, cool. It's also growing so much faster and smarter because this is the first round where they've incorporated that feedback from a huge mass audience. Since GPT-3 and 3.5, it's had so many millions of users upvoting and downvoting the results. And they've also brought in a team of more than 50 experts in separate positions to give them essentially an elite level feedback system. In the most human-like response that I have ever seen from ChatGPT, it apologized multiple times for not really understanding itself. Something I think we can all kind of understand. Does ChatGPT have an imposter syndrome? I think it might. So after a reporter congratulated it on being upgraded to GPT-4, it responded saying that it was still GPT-3. After the reporter corrected it, it said, oh, I'm sorry, and apologizes and says, I am GPT-4. Thank you for congratulating me. Thank you for the congratulations. But then the reporter is like, no, you're actually GPT-3. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I guess I am GPT-3. Sorry for pretending to be GPT-4. Which just reminded me of my high school gym coach. Are you a man or are you a boy? I'm a man. Well, you're acting like a boy. Oh, I mean, I'm a boy. Well, it's time to man up and play some football like a real man. Yes, sir. I can do that because I'm not a boy anymore. The next big milestone is 2,000 subscribers. So help me out. Hit that subscribe button. So artificial intelligence has just designed a breakthrough cancer treatment in 30 days. In just 30 days, artificial intelligence has designed a potential treatment for hepatocellular carcinoma, which is an aggressive cancer that kills over 700,000 people annually. Artificial intelligence greatly accelerated the discovery process. Compared to a conventional chemistry-based trial and error method, which can be very expensive. To develop this treatment, researchers used AlphaFold. If you remember that, that's from Google's DeepMind division, and it solved the protein folding problem, a complete breakthrough in medicine. It's basically impossible to sift through all of the ways that a protein can fold into a 3D structure. But artificial intelligence can approximate functions that just defy logic. And it did the same thing that it's doing with chat GPT and language to the different ways that those amino acids can fold into 3D structures. Thanks to artificial intelligence and the magic of shrinking that search space into something reasonable, in 30 days, we have a molecule that can actually bind to the target. I love that we live in a world now where real medicine is coming out of the work that was put into AlphaFold. I felt like a few years ago, reading about protein folding was similar to playing Go or being on Jeopardy. It was theoretical, it was fun, but it was academic. It wasn't real. And soon AI-driven medical platforms like this are gonna become so ubiquitous and the tools so easy to use that we're all going to be able to have customized medical treatment. And that means drugs that are designed and tailored for various personal diseases, rare genetic disorders, or specific cancers that have molecular profiles that are unique. The surprising link between GPT-4 and material science. So you know how on your iPhone or your Android when you're typing, it tries to predict what word you're going to use next? Well, that's thanks to a deep learning neural network that's based on a transformer architecture. And in this case, it's applied to a special branch called metallic organic frameworks. And these are a special class of materials that have loads of potential uses in terms of energy storage and gas separation. So this model is called MOF transformer or maybe MOF transformer, MOF trans, MOF? 
MoFT, MoFT is what I'm gonna call it, I think, from now on. So it's essentially the chat GPT of MoF research. But instead of predicting words, the MoF transformer actually predicts the next element. And that's another intractable problem because more elements multiply into more properties at such an exponential rate that you need a system like this to help shrink that search space again. And they train this model on millions of hypothetical MOFs. And then for this breakthrough, they fine tuned the model on the many different properties that can help with hydrogen storage. We should expect in the material sciences industry, the barrier to entry is going to become lower and the breakthroughs are just gonna become cheaper and more efficient and more abundant. And there's so many material science problems out there just waiting for a tool like this. Space travel, medicine, construction, to name a few. But the first big game changer that I'm looking forward to is in solar cells and battery storage. That's gonna make a big difference to the ecology of our planet. And I'm looking forward to seeing what these scientists use MOFT for. Curious Crew and I, basically my friends, we had a blast flirting with chatbots for our challenge. And check the description below if you want to see that video. <laughs> Holy matrimony, am I right? I'm about to be a home wrecker real quick. Oh my god, yes! He is a ladies man. Curious Challenges, a YouTube channel where we have a blast. Mr. Beast meets Las Vegas style, but sometimes we play with some really cutting edge AI stuff too. General Motors is looking for ways that they can utilize ChatGPT in their partnership with Microsoft. Certainly, a large language model like ChatGPT could be very useful for interacting with your vehicle. You know, media and music and windshield wipers, all of that stuff really lends itself to a large language model, like having somebody in your passenger seat helping you out. And extended functionality to make phone calls or open your garage door or get through a gate code. That stuff seems really useful also. Now it was earlier this year that General Motors actually announced their partnership with Microsoft. And the goal there was to push forward the commercialization of autonomous vehicles. And my guess is now that this chat GPT thing is everywhere, it just got their heads thinking about how they could maybe use this partnership with Microsoft, integrate this technology into a car, and maybe have something that Tesla doesn't, have something where they're truly the leaders in the way that interacting with a car. If you flip the script, and instead of thinking about the human interacting with the car, which is impressive on its own, what if you train the model in the reverse way? So you actually had somebody who understands all of the sensors in the vehicle, all those little check engine light things and fed that into the model. And then you rate the output based on how human the understanding is of the nuances of all the little parts of the car. You get the check engine light and you're like, check the engine. Okay, that's very vague. But if there's sensors all over the car and you start feeding that into a model in a reverse way, that could really be useful. Your car might start telling you things that seem very human. Imagine punching in a navigation and your car says back to you, I don't think I should take your route on the freeway, mostly because you haven't done your tire rotation and it's raining, and that makes me think that the risk is a little bit too much. That might be how our cars talk to us in the future. There's so many subtleties in the way that the autonomous driving works in my Tesla. Sometimes it will take me into another lane. I wish I had some way to listen to it like a human. If it said, hey, this car over here on the right is just... Yeah, weirding me out. I feel like that driver might not be paying attention. Let's just get a lane of padding between us. Or it makes these little decisions based on the weather, the cars around it, what it's maybe bringing in from GPS data and some sensors that I don't have access to in my body. That would be great. Ask it some questions like, hey, why are we doing this? Or like, do you mind staying in this lane for a little while? I don't think it's time to change. Makes me unsure. All that could be the way that we interact with the car in the future.